Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing really well. So today I am back to do my Did I Read My Christmas 2022 book haul video. This is a book haul revisit inspired by Greg over at Supposedly Fun. I've done a few of these videos now where I look back over the previous year's book haul and basically just assessing whether or not I was smart with my purchases, i.e. did I read the books that I bought or did I either DNF them or just leave them languishing on my TBR. For this video I'm actually going to be looking at two different book hauls because I didn't really film very much much in December so I need to account for my December 2022 and my January 2022 book hauls which were quite fittingly Christmas themed. I had pre-Christmas in December and then my Christmas book haul came in January. Between the two book hauls I have 26 books to talk about today so without much further ado let's just get straight into these books. The first book that I have is In the Shadow of Queens by Alison Weir. You may know in 2022 I went on a very big Alison Weir kick particularly reading her Six Tudor Queens series and in this this is a short story collection collecting stories from the courts of these six queens, the six wives of Henry VIII, but looking at these queens through the perspectives of other women around them. So I think in the very first case it's actually Prince Arthur that we're focusing on, so Catherine of Aragon's first husband and Henry VIII's brother, who should have been king but tragically died young. I got this in even November, December and read it straight away in December, I really enjoyed it. I'm on a really good kick with Alison Weir's Tudor fiction and looking forward to reading more from her. Next up was Daughters of Sparta by Claire Hayward. Greek myth retelling, we know I love a bit of Greek myth retelling, looking at the lives of Helen and Clytemnestra. I've read quite a lot of Clytemnestra retellings recently and this was one I actually ended up reading in June. I will say out of the ones I've read which were Ithaca by Claire North which does look at Clytemnestra even though it's looking particularly at Penelope, Clytemnestra by Costanza Cassetti and Daughters of Sparta, I would actually say that the Claire Hayward was probably my least favourite. I just found it a bit of a bland retelling after those previous ones and I didn't feel like it added quite as much complexity to the life of Clytemnestra but it, you know it wouldn't deter me from reading more Claire Hayward Greek mythology. Next up is The Christie Affair by Nina de Gramont, looking at the disappearance of Agatha Christie in the 1920s, to which we still don't really know the answer to what happened there. This is one that I tried to read during Herstoryathon. I actually think I got about halfway through it before I realised I just was not very interested. The beginning like hundred or so pages of the book was fairly compelling, but as we got further on in the story I just found myself not caring. And so I thought, you know, it is Herstoryathon, I want to try and read as many books as I can. I'm going to put this aside and an effort. And so I did. I honestly haven't looked back. Next up we have Rest in Pieces by Bess Lovejoy. This is looking at the afterlives of many famous people and basically how their bodies in particular have not been laid to rest as we would quite want them to. This is a popular history book, very very accessible, and it's one that I picked up and read straight away in November 2022. Next up was Death Comes at Christmas by Gladys Mitchell. This is one that I found in a charity shop which was very fortunate because I was going to be reading this for a book club. This is a somewhat Christmas themed murder mystery history, which does not seem like my typical thing aside from the fact that it's Christmassy and unfortunately I did end up DNFing it because I just could not get into this story. I'm already not a very big murder mystery fan. I also for whatever reason tend to have a bit of an issue with the writing of a lot of like 1930s to 1960s published books. I don't know what it is, there's just a dryness to them that I just cannot stand and I had the same issue with this one. Just didn't find any of the characters compelling, didn't find the story compelling and so yeah I ended up just skipping this one. My mum actually took it with her on holiday, the holiday that I'm currently on right now as you can tell from the different background and she got a few pages into it and also found it really boring so she's actually given it to the hotel library so you know hopefully somebody will read it this Christmas season and enjoy it. Another Christmas themed book that I picked up was Stories for Christmas. This is a British Library Women's Writers edition collecting different short stories from various women writers. This is one that I didn't read but has been added to my general Christmas shelf for me to take down and read as I want to which is actually probably going to be the case for quite a few of the Christmas books on here. Christmas books I do tend to dip in and out of rather than read cover to cover, just as the mood strikes me. Though actually not the case for this next one which was a Ukrainian Christmas, gorgeous gorgeous book, which I did end up reading cover to cover in December and in fact I can link below the video in which I read this. I did a little festive read with me while I was feeling sick in bed and managed to read this entire book in that time. There was also We Wish You a Merry Christmas which was a poetry collection illustrated by Chris Riddell, which once again because it's a poetry collection I was able to just blast through very quickly. So apparently if the motivation is there for me to read a book cover to cover on my Christmas shelf I will do it but then others I do just leave. <laughs> Apparently I need to be more honest not with you but to myself because we also have a history of our favourite Christmas carols by Andrew Gant which once again 
I picked up, was really engaged by, and read it straight away in December. As the title suggests, a history of Christmas carols. I'd read Andrew Gant's Five Straight Lines earlier in the year and really enjoyed his writing about the history of music, and also found his carol by carol history really engaging as well. A short story collection about Christmas that I did not end up finishing was A German Christmas. This one, like the British Library one, I ended up just putting on my Christmas shelf for me to take down whenever I want to read it. Maybe the message I'm getting is that short story collections are just not for me. The final Christmas book that I ended up picking up was Ad Advent Street by Caroline Duffy. I was so delighted when I saw that Caroline Duffy was doing these little Christmas poems again. This is something she did during her Poet Laureate days, but seemed to have put on the back burner once she was no longer the Poet Laureate, but she seems to have brought them back. I don't know if that was by popular demand or if she just missed doing it, if her publisher asked her to, but I'm really glad that she's doing them. So once again, pick this up, read it straight away. You know, it's a tiny diddy thing. I was able to read basically in the space of a bus ride and had a great time doing so. I also picked up a Pelican edition of Macbeth by William Shakespeare, which is one that I had read prior to the haul, but I wanted to pick up in the edition that I love. I also got two proofs from Head of Zeus, No Life for a Lady by Hannah Dolby and The Illuminated by Andita Ghosh. No Life for a Lady I ended up reading and not really enjoying in March 2023, whereas The Illuminated I read a little bit of and ended up DNFing unfortunately. And then You Are History, which is a children's history book by Greg Jenner, going from dawn to dusk and all of the different things that people get up to in their day-to-day -day routine and basically charting the history history of said action, whether it's brushing your teeth, putting on clothes, exercising, such a fun engaging history book, really colourful, but also brimming with facts. I'm a big Greg Jenner fan and of course I read this straight away, January 2023. Once again, had a great time doing so. So those were all of the books in my pre-Christmas haul. So you will see that I read one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten of the 15 books I ended up hauling. So actually it's 27 books, not 26 books that I'm hauling overall. I ended up DNFing three and then shelving two. So I don't think that's too, too bad. Then on to my actual Christmas haul, so the books that I picked up in December. First off, we have a string of short books that I ended up picking up in December so that I could try and surpass my Goodreads goal and my at the time record of reading 130 books in a year. Through this trick, I did end up reading 131 books in 2023, all through the power of reading tiny, tiny books. The first of those being The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde, a kind of haunted Christmassy ghost story by Oscar Wilde. I love Oscar Wilde's writing style. I find him incredibly funny no matter what he's writing. And as you can imagine, I read this one in December and had a very good time with it. I also read a little essay by Robert McFarlane called The Gifts of Reading, basically talking about the times where he has either been gifted or has gifted himself books, gifting them to others, and the kind of meaning that that has on his life. Once again, read this in December. Then there was another little short story, Sherlock Holmes and the Adventure of the Blue Carbuncle. This is one I think was actually a reread for me, but just reading it in a different edition. I've read a lot of Sherlock Holmes stories. I'm not sure if I've read the collected works, but I definitely, I think, had read this one before. But you know, I did go back to it for my little project and ended up reading it in December. Next up was Why You Should Read Children's Books Even Though You Are So Old and Wise by Catherine Rundle, Catherine Rundle's little essay on the importance of reading children's book as an adult and why you shouldn't just leave that practice is behind you as you get older, how it can really enrich your reading, enrich your understanding of children, and just all around be good fun. It's a book that I really, really enjoyed reading, and I think I actually read this in the bath before Christmas Day. <laughs> a little tiny bit of poetry that I read was My Life Had Stood a Loaded Gun by Emily Dickinson. This was one of the Little Penguin Black classics. Once again, read this in December. I don't know if Emily Dickinson is one of my favourite poets, but maybe I need to read a little bit more from her to find out more. And I think there is the break. Those are all of the short books that I really quickly tried to cram into December. December, and now we're back to regular programming. <laughs> one that I picked up for myself was Wearing My Mother's Heart by Sophia Thakur. This is one that I read very early on in January and is actually one of my favourite books of the year of 2023. I'd previously read Sophia Thakur's poetry collection Somebody Give This Heart a Pen and that was once again one of my favourite books of the year that I read it, I think it was in 2020, and so I was desperate to read her newest poetry collection and had such a great time with it. A history non-fiction that I picked up was Fires of Lust, Sex in the Middle Ages by Catherine Harvey, one that I read in February 2023, I'm sure at some point will become a super sexy history books video. There was also A Terrible Kindness by Joe Browning Rowe, which I also picked up on the way home from Oxford, on my way back home for Christmas. I think this was actually the first book that I read in 2023 and has remained one of my favourite books. Echoing a previous book in this book haul was The Gifts of Kindness, an essay collection from lots of different authors talking about reading books, libraries, and why it means so much to them. This, as you may remember, is the same as the title of an essay by Robert McFarlane, which is actually present in this book. So I didn't actually need to buy both of them, but you know what? I'm glad to have them both. The Gifts of Reading, I ended up reading in full in 
April. For Christmas, I ended up receiving Letters to Father Christmas by J.R.R. Tolkien. This is one that I'd actually read in 2020, I want to say, and I'd loved it. I really enjoyed it, but I just kind of procrastinated buying a copy for myself. But eventually I decided that I needed this as part of my Christmas shelf. It's such a lovely collection of letters which J.R.R. Tolkien wrote to his children as Father Christmas. And it's also a chronicle of English society from, I think it's the 1920s through to the 1940s, and this relationship that he had to his children. A Christmas present from my parents was Once Upon a Tome by Oliver Darkshire. This was a bit of a rogue one. I'd never heard of this book before, but my mum and my dad saw it in a shop and thought, oh, that seems like a bit of Charlotte. And they were absolutely right. I read this in April 2023 and really enjoyed it. Oliver Darkshire's memory recounting his time working at Sotheran's Bookshop, which is an antiquarian bookshop in London, and all of the trials and tribulations and misadventures that happened there. And the final book, which is also quite literary themed, is The Library of Fragile History by Arthur de Wedewin and Andrew Pedigree, looking at the long sweeping history of the library. All of the different forms that libraries have taken over time, different pressures that libraries have succumbed to, different changing technologies, and how libraries have reacted to that. It's a really, really fascinating history, and it's one that I read in February 2023 and really, really loved. Now, if you've been keeping track of that second book haul, the Christmas book haul, you may notice I read every single book all 12 books. I don't know if that's happened before in these book haul revisits, but considering that Christmas can be such a time of like overconsumption, kind of treating yourself to things because, you know, it's Christmas. I feel like it's quite notable for myself at least that I was able to read everything quite quickly that I ended up picking up in December. I'm quite proud of myself. <laughs> and there's quite a few of those books that I actually read within a month of purchasing them, which is just generally how I would like most of my book buying to be. So pat on the shoulder Charlotte, but also like stick with that please. So there we go, that's my little book haul revisit for December and January, looking at my pre-Christmas and Christmas book hauls. Do let me know if you've read any of the books that I've spoken to you about today. Alternatively, let me know about any books that you picked up in this time period that you really enjoyed. I would love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye.